So the first part of our DLR starts the same way that it has the rest of the week. We're looking for, or we're looking at analogies when we're trying to finish them. Tired is too sleepy as stone is too blank. Who can tell me what word they think would finish the analogy best? What word do you think belongs here? Tired is too sleepy as stone is too blank. Jadeen, what word do you think belongs here? Rock. Rock. Rock would work perfectly. Tired and sleepy are the same things. Stone and rock are the same thing. Tired is too sleepy as stone is too rock. Second analogy. Many is too blank as live, die. Many is too blank as live is to die. What word do you think belongs in that blank? Ezekiel, what do you think? What word would you use? What word did you use for that analogy, Ezekiel? Many is to blank as live is to die. One hour later, one did you come up with the word for it or no? I don't know. Okay. Let's see if someone can help us out. What word would finish that analogy the best? Bella? Help us out? Less. Less would be a good one. We could use less. Or we could use the word you. Either one of those would work. We want opposites. Live and die are opposites. So the opposite of many, we could say less or we could say few. Whichever one you choose. Few would work as well. So let, let's put that. Let's put less. And I'll put few. Either one of those is fine. The third one. Blank is to follower as graceful is to clumsy. Blank is to follower as graceful is to clumsy. What word do you think would best finish that analogy? What word belongs in that blank space? Graceful and clumsy are opposite. What's the opposite of follower? Kylie, you have an idea? Um, yeah, I really want to look at the leader. Leader. Leader is a great one for that. Because the opposite of a follower would be a leader. And the last one. Near is to blank as happy is too glad. Near is too blank, as happy is too glad. We don't need the ruler for now, Ezekiel. Let's go ahead and put it away. Christopher, what word do you think fills in the blank? Far. Mm. But take a look at the rest of that analogy, Christopher. Happy oh. and glad. Are happy Close? and glad the same or are they opposites? They are the same. Close? Same. Close. Close would work. Since happy and glad are the same, I need a word that means the same as near. So close 
a very good word to have there. Because remember, for analogies, they have to have that same kind of relationship. If one part is the same, the other part has to be the same. One part is opposites, the other part has to be opposite. Okay, reflexive pronouns. These were the ones that talk about the subject of the sentence, and usually they use some kind of or some version of the word self. He gave blank a pinch to make sure it was real. He gave blank a pinch to make sure it was real. Bella? Himself. Himself. So he gave himself a pinch to make sure it was real. Next one. She hurt blank on the sharp corner. She hurt blank on the sharp corner. What word belongs in that blank? Christopher. Herself. Herself. Very good. She hurt herself on the sharp corner. They left enough soup for blank and this one since it says they this is a plural so it's not self it's selves but what they left enough soup for Daya, what do you think okay sebastian what do you think belongs in that blank Mr. Not ourselves. Because if it's our, that means that you're part of that group. But it doesn't sound like you're part of that sentence. Bella, can you help us out? What do you think? Themselves? Themselves. So because it says they left enough soup, they're talking about people that are not you or a group of people that doesn't include you. We can't use ourselves, but we can use themselves. And the last one, the dog licked blank on its sore paw. The dog licked blank on its sore paw. Kylie, what do you think? It's... The dog licked itself on its door paw. And in this case, we have to use itself because we don't know if it's a girl dog or a boy dog. Otherwise, we could have used himself or herself. But because they never tell us it's a boy dog or a girl dog, we have to use itself. Okay, the sentence. We need to find all the mistakes in the sentence, fix it, and write it correctly. A giraffe is the tallest animal on earth, and its heart is two feet long. A giraffe is the tallest animal on earth, and its heart is two feet long. What's a mistake that they left in the sentence? Kylie? heart to head no that's actually okay it's got a huge heart so that part's actually okay i mean a giraffe also has a pretty big head but but having heart there is okay but what's another mistake Three of them. Alexa, do you think you see one of them? 
I think you should change feet into inches. No, not inches. So I like what you guys are thinking. It's it's pretty crazy to think that a giraffe could have a heart so big. But yeah, got a pretty big heart. Two inches would be a very, very small heart. But a giraffe has a pretty big heart. Three mistakes in this. Two of them are punctuation. One of them is capitalism. Messiah, what's one of these mistakes? Two punctuation, one capitalization. Capitalize Earth. Mm, here, we don't really have to here, but there is something that we do need to capitalize. Alexa? The eight um, before giraffe because it's the first letter of the sentence. Very the good. Word. The A in front of giraffe, then we have to capitalize it because it's the very first word in the sentence. Okay, two punctuation mistakes. Right, punctuations are small, so it's kind of hard to 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 see them all the time but there's two cap and not, ca not capitalization two punctuation mistakes Noah what do you think is one of the mistakes did we already say put a period at the end no but look at the end of the sentence here they have an exclamation mark in this case, it's actually okay to leave the exclamation mark there because like we were talking about earlier, it's a pretty amazing fact that a giraffe has a heart that's two feet long, very long heart. But because it's something that's um, like surprising, we can put an exclamation mark there because it, it, it's something that people might not expect. Jadine, what do you think? Procedures. I only have six of them. Where it says a giraffe is the tallest animal on earth, I think we should put a comma there because that can make a sentence. You're absolutely right. I have two sentences here. I'm combining them and I see that I already have a conjunction, so I need a comma. I have the first sentence a giraffe is the tallest animal on earth. And again, I could always check that with, I believe that. I believe that a giraffe is the tallest animal on earth. And I have a second sentence. I believe that its heart is two feet long. So I need a comma here. There's one last punctuation mistake. What do you think? One last punctuation. In this case, it's not like the um, it's not like the the comma. It's something that's there, a punctuation that's there that we need to fix. We need to to get rid of it, or we need to use. It. Alexa, take away the apostrophe from its. You need to take away the apostrophe from its the only time that i use the apostrophe in its is when i'm trying to say it is and if i check here i'm not going to say it is heart i would i'm trying to say that the heart belongs to the giraffe so i just get rid of the apostrophe we have capital a giraffe is the tallest animal on earth comma and it's with no apostrophe heart is two feet long exclamation mark that is a surprising fact so i don't just want to end with the period because this is something that people might not always believe
Okay. Orative conjunction. These were those fanboy words that had a partner. In the first sentence, neither Elijah nor Bill knew the stranger. What's my conjunction? Haley? Nor. Nor, and what's the partner for nor? Oops, hold on. Neither. Okay, neither. Neither and nor. What about the second sentence? Either Susie or Rosie will wash the dishes. Jada. What is my, my conjunction and what is the part? Or and either. And the last sentence. Both mom and dad said Susan could go. Ezekiel, put away the ruler for now, sir. Kylie. And and both. And and both. All right. You guys are getting really good at those. What is the best way to combine the sentence? So they give us two sentences. They want us to make them one. A giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves each day. It drinks 10 gallons of water each day. So those are my two sentences and my answer choices are A, a giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves and drinks 10 gallons of water each day. B, a giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves each day or drinks 10 gallons of water each day. C, a giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves each day because it drinks 10 gallons of water each day. Which answer choice gives us the best way to combine those sentences? Riley? A. A. A giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves and drinks 10 gallons of water each day. That is the best way to combine these sentences. So this one looks a little bit different than normal because usually we need a comma and a conjunction when we're going to combine those sentences. Answer choice A doesn't have Sorry. a comma, but answer choice A does have the correct conjunction. And what they did to make sure that it was okay is they changed that second sentence. Instead of saying it drinks 10 gallons of water each day, they changed it to just drinks 10 gallons of water each day. Since they got rid of the subject of that sentence, it, all they need is the conjunction. So that what they did is they turned this into a compound predicate. Two things that the giraffe does. The giraffe eats 75 pounds of leaves and the giraffe also drinks 10 gallons of water. Yes, Jadine. Is a charge up. Do we turn it in when we're done? Yeah, this will be the last because this is the last day for that. I'm going to leave the whole page that way in case there's anything you need to go back and fix or add or change. Go ahead and do that now. 